I'm Elizabeth, this is the Bookish North and my weekly reading video. I mean, you can see I've changed my setting for today. I'm trying to film in this room where my books actually live, um, but I'm not sure of the lighting situation in here. But for this week, uh, I'll try and see what it looks like. So this has been a fairly hectic week at work, um, but I've been doing quite a lot of reading anyways, which uh, is uh, always nice. Out of the three books that I that I was currently reading last week, uh, this one, uh, You Are Not Human, I haven't opened at all, so I'm going to carry that over until next week. But the two others I finished, one of them was my audiobook pick, which was Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. And that was a book I thought was good, I quite liked it, uh, but it's not going to be one of those books uh, that stand out to me when I look back at this reading year. I um, I think it, it's, it deals with, of course, feminism, the title kind of get, gives that away, but also a lot about pop culture things and then also a lot about race problems in the US. Um, as for the pop culture things, I was definitely most interested in the things that I had either read or watched myself because then I have sort of my own opinion to pit against hers and I always find that more interesting than just hearing what she has to say about something that I have not consumed myself. Uh, I think I said last week that I was expecting her to be sort of more controversial than I felt she actually was. I felt a lot of the things she was saying were more like common sense than controversial, but I guess that just means that my my opinions about these matters aligns pretty well with hers. Um, yeah, I, I'm glad I read it and uh, yeah, I, I don't really have much more to say about it than that. The other book, however, from uh, that I started last week uh, is a book that will stand out in this reading year and that was uh, Insomniac City by Bill Hayes. So this is a memoir uh, it says on the cover that it's a love letter to Saks, but also to New York. It's a blurb by uh, Edmund White from The Guardian, and uh, that it certainly is. Uh, so this book starts out with Bill Hayes, who's a writer living in San Francisco with his long-term partner, partner, Steve. Uh, and it starts off with Steve unexpectedly dies during the night of a heart attack. And we hear about the grief and how that grief eventually makes Bill Hayes move from San Francisco to New York to start over because he doesn't want to be in this environment where everything reminds him of Steve. And when he comes to New York he meets Oliver Sacks, the world-famous uh, neurologist and author, and they become involved. They have a relationship and for Oliver Sacks, who is aged 75 at the time, this is his first ever proper relationship. And reading about their story together is just really heartwarming. I really, really liked reading about it. them. You get all of these sort of intimate details. I'm not talking about their sex life here. I'm talking about those moments that two people who really know each other share with each other and that you as an outsider are normally not privy to. You know, their small conversations and the small things you do in your everyday life to make your partner happy. And it's just a lot of those scenes in here and they were just so yeah, heartwarming. That's the best way I could describe it. But it's also, as suggested, a love letter to New York and Bill Hayes talks a lot about walking through the city and about the people he meets and the stories he learns from them. He is a street photographer so he always walks around with his camera taking people's pictures and a lot of those pictures are also uh, like in the book and uh, I really liked seeing that as well. Uh, so the book consists of these pictures and some uh, or a lot of diary entries and then also short like stories or essays from various things happening in New York, various people he have met. I think some of those stories might have been previously published in uh, magazines 
or the likes. Uh, but yeah, put together, it's kind of this epistolary story about his life, about uh, meeting New York, meeting Oliver Sacks, and uh, yeah, how this changed his life into something better. And then towards the end, I don't feel like this is a spoiler because it's a memoir and it depicts real life events, but towards the end, uh, when you hear about Oliver Sacks' illness and then death, it is heartbreaking and I really struggled to finish this book because for the last like 20 or 10 pages I literally couldn't see the pages. They were all blurry because I was crying <laughs> in case that wasn't clear. But yeah, I absolutely adored this book and I will now count this as one of my favourite memoirs of all time, I think. So if you're into memoirs and haven't read this uh, you definitely should check it out. It's great. I did buy this uh, in February when I was in London. I bought it at Gaze the Word and I didn't know anything about it at the time. I was sort of drawn in by the cover and then reading the back. It sounded like a book for me so I bought it on a whim and the person at the register said I had made a very good choice because it was a great book and I couldn't agree more. This is one of the highlights of my reading year so far. So that was the books that I carried over from last week. Uh, and then this week I have started a bunch of new books. Uh, sort of uh, tying in with reading projects for um, August. So one of the books I've started is The Goldfinch by Donna Tart, which has been sitting on my shelves for a very long time. So when Sarah at Hardcover Hearts and Juan from Just One Reader uh, were announcing a read-along for this, I decided that that was what I needed to pick it off the shelf and get started. So I'm about 100 pages in by now, liking it so far. Um, don't have more to say about it today, other than I'm happy to have finally got started on something that I've been meaning to read for years. And then there's another reading challenge for August that I plan to participate with and that is Women in Translation Month where the only rule is to read books that are written originally in a different language than English. The books don't even have to be translated into English so for me it would be fine to read a lot of new Norwegian releases for this but I decided for myself that I wanted to read books in translation so not in English and not in Norwegian. I think I might change my mind during the month. But I made a big pile of books uh, for myself to choose from. Uh, if I can maybe hold it up without... Um, but yeah, uh, I'm not going to read all of these, uh, but that's sort of my pile. And I just started from the top of the pile uh, with two Swedish books, which I have finished uh, both of them this week so far. So the first was Grand Mal by Linda Boström Knausgård. If you think her last name sounds fami familiar, yes, she was uh, married to, you know, this guy. That's where she got the name. Um, but um, yeah, this is a short story collection. It's 140 pages, originally written in Swedish, but translated into Norwegian by Monica Osprom. I don't think this book is translated into English, uh, but some of her other books are. Uh, I sadly did not really get on with this. This is another one that's been sitting here waiting for me for years. I think it was published in 2012 and I probably got it the year after. Um, I really like the first story here. It's only four pages long and in the story a woman is uh, talking to a unknown you person, it might be God, I don't know, but she is asking this you person to take care of her family and make sure that they are happy, even if she might not be able to make them so. Uh, and that was a story that had an impact on me, it felt raw and emotional, it was beautifully written. So it was a very good opening and it gave me high hopes for the rest of the collection. But sadly the rest of the stories in here didn't really connect with me at all. Uh, the second story is sort of a fairy tale retelling, which I'm not into at all. And then 
there are just snippets from life and I don't really feel the need behind telling these stories and I think that's what I need when I read short stories I need to feel like there's a purpose behind them and with these stories I just didn't feel that so this is going in my donations pile but at least I did take it off uh, from all of my unread books most of the stuff you see behind me are unread books because the red ones I kind of give away and then the other book that uh, I picked up uh, this week was uh, Amatka by Karin Tiedbeck which is another Swedish book and this is translated into English however I have read the original Swedish version which made it kind of a slow read to begin with for me because it's been a while since I read in Swedish and it just was a lot slower going than reading in Norwegian or English but once I got into it again it was fine. Norwegian and Swedish are similar enough uh, for it to be possible to read across languages and you know my previous uh, boyfriend was Swedish so I, I, I'm fairly familiar with Swedish. Uh, so this is um, this is a dystopian novel uh, and it's really slow going. Uh, it's just this gradual reveal of a world and a society and I guess a lot of people won't be up for that but I really liked it. Uh, we follow a woman called Vanya who is a market researcher. She's sent from one town called Esre to another called Amatka uh, to do market research about the kind of hygienic products the people in this town uses. Uh, we get the impression that there aren't really a lot of these towns, they are called colonies, they are clearly uh, some kind of like collectives, so sort of communist societies perhaps. She's sent from the one city to the other on a train with no windows and no other passengers, so there's just a lot of these tiny hints that something is not quite right, something is off. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I said, it's just this really slow, gradual build of tension uh, throughout the novel. It's not like very plot heavy, uh, it's about the environment and um, language plays uh, an important part in what is going on here. And that's really all I want to say because if you want to read this book it's the kind of book that you should know as little as possible about going into it because the whole getting to know uh, the surroundings, getting to know you know what has happened previously, all of these things uh, is sort of the whole point of the book. I will say the characters are not really all that interesting. There is like an attempt of at least giving the main character a backstory and some emotional depth, uh, but as for the others they are merely there to help her. But again they're not really the most important part of the book and uh, despite not having like any real plot to talk of and not all that interesting characters. This book really managed to captivate me and as the tension grew I uh, was really drawn into the story and uh, I quite enjoyed it. So I'm happy that uh, Women in Translation Month sort of prompted me to finally pick this up. And then just, just before starting this video really I did barely start uh, Near to the Wild at Heart by Clarice Lispector, translated from the Portuguese by Alison Entrickin. Yeah, uh, but I've only read like five pages or so, so I can't say anything about this, but I will be continuing on this uh, next week. So I guess my next week of reading will consist of Clarice Lispector and uh, The Goldfinch and maybe a few more chapters from uh, You Are Not Human. And then apart from that, uh, whatever tickles my fancy from uh, this pile of translated fiction. That was my reading week. I hope you've had a good reading week and that you will read some interesting books in the week to come. Um, if you want to talk about them, 
there's always the comment section. And until next time, bye bye.